This episode of the Game Over Greggy Show is brought to you by Movement Watches. Movement Watches was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. The watchmaker's goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high-quality, minimalist products at revolutionary prices. With over 500,000 watches sold to customers in more than 160 countries around the world, Movement Watches has solidified itself as the world's fastest-growing watch company. Movement Watches started just $95. Now, at a department store, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at $400 to five. 500 bucks. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and the retail markup, providing the best possible price. Classic design, quality construction, and stylized minimalism. Over 500,000 watches sold in more than 160 countries. Did I say that? I did. Right now, you can get 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to movementwatches.com slash greggy. That's M-V-M-T watches.com slash greggy. This watch is cool. You've seen me talk about it before. Black face, red hands, black band. I look awesome. So it's time to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Step up your watch game. Go to movementwatches.com slash greggy, MVMT. Join the movement. All right, my topic, <laughs> your topic right. is about Nick Scarpino. Uh oh, Nick, oh, a while oh. back on a few yeah. shows ago, you teased you, oh, you should do your waiter slash food stories as a topic. Right. I want to hear some. You, I want to hear about some of these stories. You, you were a waiter for how long? Uh, or how long were you in food service? I was in the food service. My first job ever was as uh, I was sixteen or no, seventeen years old, and I was a, uh, a a pizza cook at an Italian restaurant. So that's why I remember I taught you how to do. Pizza. I was going to say for the record. Yeah. You can, of course, go to my Instagram, Instagram.com slash Game Over Greggy, right. and I still use your pizza method. That pizza I made last week was so fucking phenomenal, yeah. I bought the stuff again to make it this week. So, I, yeah, my I, my friend of mine uh, worked at a place called Boompas, which was uh, near, near a... <laughs> was it near Patsy's? <laughs> no, it was very close. <laughs> it was near a uh, an Edwards Cinema uh, in Riverside, California. It's, not, it's no longer there, unfortunately, but he got me a job as a uh, waiter. Now, we made... Uh, I'm sorry, a, a cook, rather. Uh, and we made just minimum wage. Just a cook. Just a cook. Lowly, lowly fry cook. No. Um, what minimum wage back then was, I want to say it was. Four bucks. No, it was somewhere up in seven, oh. six or seven, something like that. It could have been, been, been fucking four bucks since like the 30s. Jesus. I had the corner. I had just points at me. Yeah. <laughs> just like the 30s. <laughs> um, so that's that's where I learned the uh, the sort of the value of of working hard. And not working smart, right? Mm. And so that that was mm. I, I always say like when you're young and you're just starting out in anything, what you end up doing, the cycle that you end up being in is learning what not to do over and over and over and over again until eventually you figure out figure it out, and then you're like, oh, I'm I've been an idiot all this time. I'm working way too hard. I should work smarter. This was the job that I was like, this is the worst job I'm ever gonna have, and I knew it happening. I knew it was happening while it was happening, but all my friends worked there, and then one by one they went away. And then I went mm -hmm. off to college, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop this. This is horrible. But we would work like from four to like one minimum wage, and then when all the waiters got to go home, we would have to do, we have to clean up the, the kitchen. So like a normal restaurant, you have a cleaning crew that comes in. So mm -hmm. like a really fancy restaurant, like the cooks don't clean; they'll clean their station probably and make sure everything's prepped for the next day and sanitized or whatever. But then there's a deep clean that happens every night. We did the deep clean, and I mean, when I say deep clean, I mean I used to have to clean out the little the gutters, like the the the, the troughs at the bottom of the floor, where all the shit would coagulate as all the water and mm. sauce and spill, everything would spill. Mm. And then I remember thinking, this is this is the this is the fucking most horrifically demeaning thing I've ever had to do. When the the lead chef walked me into the walk-in refrigerator, we're talking like you know, this is, it's a freezer basically, yeah. um, freezing cold. But throughout the night, when you're pulling stuff, shit would fall on the ground, sauce would fall, and it would coagulate, and then you'd step on it. So Ugh. over and over and over go. And he's like, "You got to clean that up." And I'm like, "Well, how do I do that?" It's like frozen. And he hands me this. Um, it's like a blade. It looks like a handle with a dull blade on it. And what what it's used for is scraping the dough off of a tray. So like when your when your dough's risen, you scrape it off mm -hmm. like this, and then you can put it on the flour and, and roll it out. He hands me that thing, and he's like, "You got to scrape the." all the shit off this floor and then sweep it up and then mop it. And so at the end of every night, I would literally get on my hands and knees and scrape like fucking pasta or dough that had been like ground into this floor <laughs> over the spirit period of like six hours. Jesus. Scrape it all, sweep it up, take a, a fucking dirty, like a clean mop. And, and by the way, when you were done with the mop water, it would start off clay and it would be fucking brown. 
And then I would have to do that for like every other part of, of the, the kitchen. And you're in a freezer. Oh, you're in a freezer. Yeah, so, so it's like super cold. hard. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's terrible. You, you're, you're bouncing out and trying to get like a little bit of warmth. Granted, I was like also a cook and didn't give a fuck what I ate back then. So there was that. But there was also like I would make myself pizza every five minutes. Like there would we have excess dough and I would just roll out roll the pizza and send it through. And it, what, it was like trying to escape from prison. Like one out of every three would get caught by the guy, like the lead cook. And he's like, you can't fucking do this. You can't be eating pizza while you're making pizza. I was like, okay, cool. And then I'd like lock eyes with my other homie. I'm like, oh, we got two more coming yeah. we got two more coming <laughs> uh, you know he would just like i would make myself like sandwiches and just hide them behind shit and he was like dude you can't eat half a sandwich and put it, it's not sanitary and i'm like i'm 16 i don't fucking care like oh, doesn't matter and so that was that was one of the jobs that i was happiest in my entire life to quit and then i went from there to uh i worked at a, like a like a jamba juice slash like the uh, coffee place got even fatter there because i was like like it was like it was like a it was a juice it up I think is what it was. Remember juice, juice it, it up? up. Remember juice it up? No. They're like, they, it, it, it's these these uh the style of juice place smoothie place that sold the most unhealthy smoothie on the planet. Like the normal healthy smoothie is like you know like maybe uh, almond milk with some spinach and maybe some and this was like ice cream. <laughs> And like and like some strawberries. Okay. Right. And so I would I would eat like five six of those a day. I would just be cannonballing those fuckers. Just because you'd experiment. You get bored. You're like, you know, you're what 18. happens if I put in a kiwi, yeah. strawberries, What's and meat chocolate like, chip? Disgusting. You get another one, you know. Um, <laughs> so I did that, but it, well, I didn't start serving food until midway through college, and that was because my brother had served food, and so I kind of saw that lifestyle, and I was like, oh, Matt Scarpino must have been one of the funnest waiters he to was have. Awesome. He Matt, he strikes me as one of the guys who'd come up, spin the chair, on. what's going on, guys. What oh, do you want? Matt's you want some jalapeno poppers? Played, he played characters, yeah, like right? Mad, My mad brother, like swag. Flair. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's yeah, totally a TV yeah, totally apparatus. The best. <laughs> Wait for this. My brother, when he when he's on the show, we should have him do these stories. But I think he, I think we did before. Did we? But okay, keep he going. worked at a place called Bobby McGee's in San in San, uh, San Bernardino. Um, Bobby McGee's is a theme restaurant, so you pick you play a character while you're it's serving LA. food, and his wow. character was great, Scott. Oh, I do vaguely remember him talking about kilt. being a kilt. And sometimes, and then this was this was deep in, <laughs> deep into my brother's like college. I he's, he was a Sigma Nu. He was drinking like every fucking night. He looked great because he was like you know he looked like he was training for like the sex Olympics. And so he <laughs> he would just mow through people and like <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. But I I went the other way with it. I was like I'm gonna be super fat and smoke a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> So it's a lot less work. Yeah, it was a lot less work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we and that was my that was my life for a while, for for all of college, which was just bouncing back and forth between restaurants. Like my first restaurant, I got, I worked at for a couple of years. That was the one where I was when I, I became a server at that restaurant, and it was it was fun because I hated it so much that I never pushed for the fun like the good shifts where you could actually make money. Mm-hmm. So I'd get the Sunday afternoon shifts where mm-hmm. we would everyone would bring breakfast and we would just have cereal, and then someone would walk in and be like. You kind of go over and serve them and come back to like just chilling. Like it would be a nuisance. Make people feel unwelcome the yeah, second they like, walk in. Like, should nah, we be nah, here? Are you guys like, open? Yeah. <laughs> it was like an Italian restaurant for lunch. It's like, you, you don't want to be here. Right. It's Sunday. You don't want to be here. Um, but the, the the lifestyle starts to wear on you after a while because because it is very much you work until midnight and then take every every dollar you've earned in tips and then we all go to the bars afterward. And so there was like everyone was sleeping with everyone. So like people got knocked up constantly. There was oh, like it'd be, like girls like the, the hostesses would drop like flies because every like six months one of them would be like I'm pregnant, and then <laughs> it was always super <laughs> it was always super awkward because like you knew the guy that was begging them was also begging the other hostesses. Oh my god! And like I remember one of the like people do stupid shit because you're when you're serving food when you're in that lifestyle you're not in the normal world. Mm-hmm. Like there's a uh, Anthony Bourdain wrote a book about this and that made him famous. Kitchen Confidential. Uh, yeah, and it's supposed to be I, I don't read I don't read again yeah. unless I'm on a flight. But it's, and about, it's in a plastic bag. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But but it's about that. It's about that sort of like you're at work when everyone's not. Mm. You're what, like when you don't know, think about it because when you go to a restaurant, you sit down. You're there for good service. But people, that's their job. Mm-hmm. They're working. So at five o'clock when you get off, then you're thinking like, oh, we're gonna go go for steaks tonight or whatever. Someone's thinking, I'm I gotta go to work. I gotta be professional mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But after that, holy shit! Like there there are there were times when you'd have guys that were like I remember one time we had a guy. Good looking guy, but dumb as shit. Mm. Very hip hop, though. Um, <laughs> like, he was totally like the whitest guy you know, but he talked like he was a hip hop artist. So you're like, oh, God. I'm familiar with a lot of those guys. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Cool Greg. 
Nice. Oh. Oh. God bless him. Oh. By the way, his Instagram is, is public now, and it's the best thing on the planet. Yeah. 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 This, what is it? It's cool Greg underscore. I think. Yeah. yeah. Cool Greg. Yeah, cool Greg, Greg underscore. Cool Greg. I like Cool Greg. No, Cool Greg's a fucking. Oh, we love the cool, Greg. love cool Greg. Love cool Greg got cool the name because he's Cool Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Cool Greg last night was in, in, in the most Cool Greg mood I've ever seen him in my life. He orders a burger. We go to we go to BJ's because Sean wanted to go to BJ's. Of course he did. It's eleven thirty, and he's like, mm-hmm. "They close at midnight. We can get there." And I'm like, "I'm sure they're going to be super happy that a party of ten walked in yeah. at eleven thirty with on five a minutes to Sunday order." Night. Yeah. So we get, we get in there. Cool Greg orders a a burger, but it has mayo on. He doesn't like mayo. No. He and doesn't. so he goes, "Can I have it with no mayo, please? Don't even put it on the side. Just no mayo." The woman's like, "Cool," but it's eleven thirty. Yeah. And so she goes. Back and again, another one of those server stories. Like I've been in that situation where I'm like, mother fuck, I just I thought we were closing. I was almost out of here. Yeah, and yeah, party yeah. town walks in. <laughs> Burger comes, it's got mayo on it, and he just looks at it. And it broke him. <laughs> and he was just like, because he was like, I don't want to embarrass you guys, but this has mayo on it, and I don't want to eat it. And I'm like, well, send it back. And he's like, I, I'm fine. I'm not going to say anything. And I'm like, well, it's more awkward that you're just staring at the burger <laughs> than it is if you just tell you don't want it, right? And then so she comes and I'm like, you know what? He it doesn't have it has mayo on it. Can you can you remake it? Or is the if the kitchen's closed, don't worry about it. Just just take it back and take it off the bill. Mm-hmm. And she looks at him and she's like, what do you want me to do? And he goes, I don't know. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, well, we're making for you. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but like he wasn't even hungry so it comes and then he just keeps staring at it and then I'm, and he's like can I get a and then like you know 15 minutes after we're all done eating he's like can I get a box and then the box comes and it's got toothpicks in it and so he's trying to close the box over it because it's so perfect he doesn't want to take the toothpicks out of it but the toothpicks start poking through the box <laughs> and he's just it's just it was a whole kerfuffle yeah it was cool a Greg I love that um, you had your first pazuki I had my first pizuki. Yeah, man. That shit is crack. Yeah, it was it's good. amazing. It was so good yeah. that she delivered two pizukis and six forks. There's 10 of us. Now, most people didn't want part of the pizuki. I was like, it's my birthday weekend. I'm going to have some fucking pizuki. I haven't had cake. I'm going to have some pizuki. So I'm eating, and I look over, and I lock eyes with Kevin. Kevin did not get a spoon or a fork for this thing. Oh, no. And Kevin's just like, excuse me, can I have it? Excuse me. Excuse me, can I have it? <laughs> sir, she kept a spoon. Walking. Kept walking by. She's like, I'm closing. I'm done. Sir, sir, excuse me. I'm halfway through, and Kevin's like, this is starting to bother me. I don't know what to do. Do I get up? And he was like in the middle of the table, so he couldn't get up. So finally, he looks at me, and I'm just whittling through ours. And I I look at him and I, he looks at me and my spoon comes out of my mouth and I just hand it to him and he takes it, digs into the bazooki and starts eating as his spoon gets delivered and he goes like this, it's okay, I'm using his dirty spoon and I'm like, I'll take the clean one. And it was this, and Kevin, fuck it, he didn't care, he didn't skip a beat, just kept going in it. God bless it. That's the kind of shit you deal with when you're when you're a server. That's that's what you have to deal well, with. That's how good that pazuki was. You was fucking took a spoon right out of that man's mouth. So is this do you, from your time of being a server? Is that where your short fuse comes from for bad service? Yeah, I think that because I was such a terrible server because yeah. I hated it, and it was again it was another one of those life 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 lessons where I was like I don't know why I'm investing any time in this like. I was just so caught up in not really having ambition that I'm like, I'm serving food, I'm making enough money, I'm getting by, like this is fine. Um, but there is, you know, anything worth doing is worth doing right. So there sure. is a sense of sort of pride that you you kind of have. You're like, well, you know, I'm like these people came here to have a good experience. Like I want to give them the best experience I can. Um, and so there are, you know, you when you worked at nicer restaurants, you had people that really gave a fuck about it. Like I worked at a place called Bertolini's, which I think there's still one in Vegas. Um, but they had corporate like offices and they'd have people that would come train you and they were like, look, mm. these are the steps of service, right? These are the things that you're supposed to do in order to ensure that people are having a good time. Touch like, a table in the first five minutes. Touch a table in the first five minutes, right? Like drink orders have to cut, like get there, tell them about the specials, get the drink orders, get any appetizer orders and get those drinks back as soon as possible. Once the food drops on the table, you got to get back there with it before like before the second bite, I think is what they used to say. So like you, you that those are the things that sure. you want to make sure – and, and there's and there's sort of an art to to making sure that people are taken care of and not smothered, right? You don't want to be that guy that's turning the chair sideways and be like, guys, what are we doing tonight? What are we doing after this? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you want to be that person that's just kind of there to facilitate, amplifying the experience, amplifying yeah, the yeah, experience, yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Um, and and you know, I was never really that person because I never really gave a fuck. Yeah. Right. And so when I see people that don't give a fuck, it's very easy to recognize that like yourself. Sure. I'm like, you don't care. You're working on us. Like that one time we went in Austin, oh it was like a day, like no one was there. That dude was high as fuck on Quaaludes. We will never um, stop referring to that trip. Like that that was the worst. That was the worst experience, experience I've ever had. had. And so that's when I, I just, it's, it's unacceptable because I think on a very base level, I don't care what you're doing. If you are doing a job that you hate, stop doing the job. Yes, okay. I agree. 
Figure out something else. Yeah. Don't let it fuck you up. Don't let it turn you into an asshole. Don't let it turn you into a lazy, unambitious piece of shit. The second that happens, you're going to eventually run into me and I'm going to call you out on it. And that's what this guy, this is what's happened. This guy at this restaurant that we went to, the food was so late. We had time. We were like, we ordered. It took him forever to get our fucking order. Food goes in. Food doesn't come out for, and it's been 30 minutes at this point. 45, 45 was, yeah. Since we ordered. And I'm like, excuse me, sir. Can you check on our food? It's been a little while. And he goes, he looks at his fucking watch and goes, well, it's only been like 12 minutes. And I'm like, go get your manager. Yeah. <laughs> go get your manager right now. And he's like, what? And I'm like, go get your fucking manager right now. And she comes over like, what's going on? And I'm like, when I ask a server where my food is, I don't want him to tell me that it's only been 12 minutes. Yeah. Especially when, and I showed her the watch of or, or, or my phone, the text message when we sat down. I was like, I sent this text out when we first sat down. It has been 45 fucking minutes. Mm -hmm. And there was no one in this restaurant. It was us, a table of old people, and a fucking dog outside. And that was it. And I'm like, where the fuck is our food? And she's going to the restaurant. <laughs> dog's like, Sir, I think you should leave. Uh, I'm like, go check on our food. She goes, she's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I think the guy forgot to put the fucking order in because he, he was noticeably high. Like, you talked uh, about this, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know what he was doing. I'm guessing pill addiction, but I'm not sure. Um, so this guy. <laughs> And he cut your then, professional opinion. And then, he's look, and then he's like shooting us looks across the thing. And I'm like this, look to the manager. And she was a very nice person. And was like, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. We'll take care of this. We'll comp some of your stuff for you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, good. But I'm like, look, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this guy serving us anymore. I don't like this guy. We need, we have shit. We got to do later today. We got to get back to the convention center. Like you got to get us another server. And the next guy to the credit was, he was Johnny on the spot. But like, I don't want to be in that environment. No. no one's happy. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I've already yelled at someone. I've already raised. I've already like. I didn't yell, but I was stern with someone. And I hate mm. having to do that. It's debatable where where you were at eh. volume wise. I was on the middle. I was I was on the I was on the the cusp. The cusp. Yeah. Um, service. That's the. I mean, I, over the weekend, like it was the this like the varying degrees of different service. Where Jen was in town, we went up uh, north through Marin uh, to Hog Island Oyster Company, where you go and like they have an oyster bar there. Mm -hmm. Super, it's a town. You know, it's Marshall, a town of fifty people. They have all these different oyster shacks on the water. You where, get, wait, where is this? Marshall, California, oh, up okay. north. About an hour and a half with traffic, hour 15 if it's cool. It's going well. Uh, anyways, we got up there. We had the, I had, yesterday she, or the day before she'd been like, I want to go do this. I'm like, all right, do you want to sit at the bar or do you want to get like the picnic thing? Because the pic, the bar is like normal. They're going to bring you, you order what you oyster want. And they're going to bring yes. it to you. And then the picnic thing is you get a table and a grill and you go buy the oysters and you bring them over and you shuck them yourself and you do all this stuff. Awesome. You grill them and you bring other stuff. It's like, let's do the picnic. I'm like, all right, cool. And we got there and I was immediately off put because like the reservation started at 10. The first off. Overall, amazing experience. Place is great. I'll go back. Right. But it was that jarring thing of what my expectations were mm. because it is San Francisco and Bay Area. Yeah. And I we do go to really great places usually that are super yep. awesome. You know mm. what I mean? And we got there and like there was a line to get in, but it was like 11 o'clock and our reservation started at 1030. You book it for like three hours, right? right? And so we got there and I'm like, well, they're lined up for the bar. There's already people over the picnic table. What do we do? So like we walked in and then like the person at the bar was like, oh, we're not open. Just I'm like, we have a picnic reservation. She's like, oh, go still go back. We'll be right there. And she walked over and like brought us there and she's like, all right, cool. And you go over there to get your oysters and you do this thing. And we'll see you later. And they walked away and like, no, was this our first time? Like, what do we do? Like, right, I was right. like, all right. So I walked over there. I'm like, I come to get oysters from you. He's like, oh yeah, how many? I'm like, all right, great. And I'm like, do you, I need charcoal. He's like, oh, you get that at the bar. I'm like, but that could, okay. I'm like, went over there and then bring the charcoal and it's not, it wasn't briquettes. It was like the, the mesquite logs or stuff, which are great, but I'm, you know, I haven't barbecued since I lived in Missouri because right. you can't have a fucking barbecue in San Francisco. Right, right, right. So I'm like, it was just like this like frustration of like, Fuck, what is this all? And then once I got in the rhythm of it, I was like, all right, great. But then the opposite, you know, of uh, we, I took her to Wayfair Tavern because she wanted fried chicken. And we were going to go out see some uh. sketch comedy because it's sketch fest or whatever. Oh, and so shit. Right. We, we, I, we were late for that reservation. Or uh, first off, I called them while we were crossing the, the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm like, hey, we're coming in. I know it's tough. Can we get a spot? And the guy's like, oh, hold on. yes, we can. We put you the, the chef's thing or maybe a table. I'm like, great, perfect. And he's like, what's your name? Give him my name. Start reading my phone number at autofill. He's like, oh, welcome back, Greg. I'm like, oh, right. hang up. Then a few hours later, we're late, of course. <laughs> so I call him like, hey, we're like 20 minutes late. I'm like, oh, no problem. Mr. Miller, blah, 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 we'll do this. And I hang up. She's like, man, they were all really cordial. I'm like, yes, that's what everyone's supposed to be like. You're that's supposed to, supposed to be the experience. You want people to come back. You gotta be nice to them. And bro. that was the problem of the next day we went to Social Kitchen and Brewery in the sunset, which I fucking love. Great yeah. beers, the food's solid. But as we walked in, she's like, oh, this place is really cool. I'm like, yeah, heads up, the service always fucking awful. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, they have this new guy, I'm not sure if he's a new owner or a new manager, and I've seen him trying to whip the place into shape. We're gonna see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Fucking terrible. The bill comes, she's like, let me pick it up. I'm, she's like, let me pick it up. I'm like, great, give them no money. 
She's like, what? And she's Canadian. I'm like, give them nothing. Like, do not tip them. She's for like, this. I don't have that. I can't do that. I can't yeah, and I know that. it was yeah. a whole like conversation <laughs> of like, I will fucking tear this up and I'll pay for the meal to fucking give them no money. Yeah. Because again, it was just like, Five different people came. No communication between them. Oh. Long periods of time. We ordered a salad and a, um, the pork belly fried rice they do. That should take two seconds yeah, to cook yeah, and plate. Yeah. And we were there like 30 minutes. We finished our drinks. They came by like, do you want another drink? I'm like, no, I'd like the food. Yeah. Like if I get, if I, you know, if this would have all moved in, you know, a f- smooth fashion, maybe I would have yeah, liked that. But now I'm fucking five. angry and I don't want to do this. Yeah. That's, and, and that's, that's the thing for me is like, and, and again, I recognize that. Like I don't have it in myself not to tip. Like I've never, ever walked out of, or even that restaurant we were at, I still tipped you generally did. well. Because you did. And we fought you on that. Yeah, yeah. You're like, don't do it. I was like, I, the, the second guy was good and he's getting the tip. Yeah, so yeah, that's I, fine. I get that. Um, but, my thing is when you're at a like San Francisco is a different ecosystem, right? Because the service industry up here is more way more focused on the actual food than I think it is on the service. Now that's not to say like we went to Nopa and the service there was oh, sure. fucking amazing. Wayfair um, was great. Wayfair Nopa was great. great. So there's lots, plenty of places. But I have been to a lot of mom and pop owned shops where yeah. they're owned by people who just like to cook, but not necessarily understand what the service should be based around that, right? Mm-hmm. And there is a mentality in some of these places where. When you go to them, it's not about the customer. You're almost putting them out by wanting to do things. You know what I mean? And we, I don't like that experience. I went to the Chinese food shop down uh, the street with a friend a couple of weeks ago or whatever. And we got there and like the people who were running were just eating Chinese food in the middle at lunch. <laughs> it's like we they were like, oh, sit here. I'm like, great. And we sat there like. There's eating. I can see you. Can you come, like, get our order? Yeah, you whatever you're having? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I mean, for whatever it's worth, I mean, that usually signifies it's good food. It's good food. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we're eating it? Fuck, it must yeah, be good. Yeah. No, but so this, the tail end of my, my serving career really taught me something, though. And that was when I was out of college. I graduated. I was not using my uh, prestigious film studies degree from the University of California, Irvine. Um, and I was pretty depressed. I was like, I'm all I'm... Because you are kind of what you do, right? You know, I, I don't really necessarily subscribe to the notion that your like your inner qualities are you. Like, you're your actions. You're you're sort of a culmination of what you do. And at that point, all I was doing was serving food. And again, not to disparage the food service industry if that's what you love doing, great. But I wanted to be in video production. I wanted to make films. Um, and so I had just started shooting weddings, and it was just getting to a point where I'm like making a little bit of money on it, but I still needed my serving jobs, and I was doing two at the same time. So I was at two different restaurants because I was like, I got nothing better to do. So I'm just going to pull double shifts every day, which is stupid. Again, working harder, not smarter. I could have been like, I have all morning to do not like go on a film shoot or or schedule those things out. And I just didn't fucking do it. I did a couple, but it didn't work out. Um, And so something psychologically broke in me at a certain point and was like, you're more than this or you want to be more than this. Mm -hmm. You have other aspirations and goals in life. And this is holding you back. But that was deep in my subconscious. And how that manifested was in the span of a month, I got fired from two jobs. So I was working at huh. I was working at the market broiler in in the block at Orange, which is like a run of the mill. Like it's like a uh, like you get salmon for like 10 bucks at this place, you know. So it's <laughs> and everything comes with like eight sides. So you, they'll tell you the quality of the film. The, the, so it's like the, Applebee's level. Like pr- that sort of thing? Little, maybe uh, a little bit lower. OK, um, I was working there and I was working at a, at a Japanese <laughs> restaurant. And so. uh at one point, I just got so frustrated that I, like, it was this exact same thing we were talking about with us last night where this party came in. And I was like, I'm supposed to be going home. And a party of, like, 10 came in on a Sunday. And I was like, dude, we're supposed to be closing right now and, like, shutting down for the next thing. Like, I was telling my manager, I was like, you got to close. Like, we're, I got to, I can't keep working. And the guy's like, you got to take this table. I was like, fine, whatever. And I was punching in their order. And I just went, and I just put my fucking hand through this, like, this Point terminal. Sale system. And I looked up at him. And he looked over at me. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> that's such I'm a like, fucking boss way to quit i'm like i guess uh and he's like yeah you're you're fired it's like you can't destroy a 300 dollars yeah. like, computer console like i can't have you doing that and i was like okay you shuffled the menus put them in your briefcase and walked out yeah, <laughs> like, uh, sir it's been excellent working with you uh and then so the next month i got or i think actually it wasn't within a month i apologize about that it was i think i quit the other job because i got another job at downtown disney and that was the last serving job i ever got which was at the ralph brennan jazz kitchen Hell yeah, and that was. was that was where i was like i'm getting a little too old for this lifestyle because that was at that place i had heard stories of the christmas party before where they were no longer allowed by disney to have their christmas party at ralph brennan's because people like we're fucking on the balcony. Yeah. Like it was going, it was crazy because they shut it down <laughs> and then like everyone would come there. And, <laughs> and I was like, fuck, how did I miss that one? Uh, and that where, was when. Where do I sign up? I hit a part in my life where I was like, I just, I got to just want to fuck on a myself. balcony, man. Well, I definitely want to fuck on a balcony. I still want to fuck on balconies. I want to fuck in bathrooms also. I just want to fuck. Uh, but it was me and my good friend. We called him Eddie No No because he used to drink a lot. 
and he was an ex-marine and he had these Stuart, crazy- Eddie, No-No, and Nick Dude. running around <laughs> Irvine. Eddie was a great guy. He was an ex-marine, right? And he, and he actually, I think he was over in Iraq for a while. Came back and he was serving food. Really cool guy. Uh, but we just became friends because we had that sort of like, we're working the day shift all the time at, in downtown Disney. There's never anything happening. He would just like pour me drinks and we would just get fucking hammered. And then when it started to rain or when it was slow, we'd, we'd all get off in a small contingency of us drunk as shit would get on the monorail and go over to Disney for free because we were Disney employees, technically. We weren't employees, but we were like associates or whatever. Yeah, cast, no, we weren't cast members, but we were like one step down from that. Mm. So like we weren't, Key we grips. didn't get all the, the perks <laughs> of like we could get other people in, but we could get into the park. And so we'd get hammered and go ride Space Mountain just over and over again. And I'm like, I gotta do something else with my life. And then the wedding That's business terrible. started picking up yeah. just to the point where I was like, I can't really pay rent on it yet. And then it happened. There was one day when like, I just couldn't deal with tourists anymore. Because when you work in downtown Disney, you're working with a lot of uh, people who are on vacation. But they're from fucking, they come from wherever. And if it's raining that day, they don't, it's not like you cannot be on vacation with their family. You just came from France. And so people are pouring in and there's shit everywhere. And I'm just so fucking tired. And it's raining outside. And again, I was just like, I got, I'm supposed to be off. And my manager's like, you got to stay a couple more hours. You punch and, this French dude, guy. And I just looked at him and I was like, you got to just, I can't, man. You got to like, we're supposed to like, because at this restaurant we were supposed to close and then you'd like reopen mm -hmm. at a certain point. I was like, you got to close the doors. He's like, I can't. We're making money and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, well, if you'd stop being a little fucking bitch, you could get out there and like close the fucking doors and leave. Like I was, I was like basically like telling him like you got to be a fucking manager here. You can't work your crew to death. And he was like, what did you just call me? I was like, I called you a little fucking bitch. And I just got fired, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you're super fired. And I was like, fuck. And it was, it was actually, it was the best. I just it was got the fired, worst weekend of my life, but the best week of my life because I literally was like. Oh shit, what do I do? And that is the best place for you to be, especially when you're a young creative, because you're like, I'm f I have I'm forced to get out of my box. Yeah. Like this little box I was living in is not working. And I just tore out of it, whether I like it or not. So I have to do something. And that was when I was like, I got a brainstorm. And I called my friend who was working at this other place and I was like, Can you get me more gigs here? And I called people and I was like, What can we do? Yada yada yada. And and sure as shit, I was able in the span of a month to start putting together that month with just video work. And I'm like, oh wow. I've entered this new That's awesome. section of my life. Anybody that I know that has ever succeeded in the arts have quit and focused on it 100%. Have that moment. no net is the yep. only way, way you'll make it happen. 100%. You know?